Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, over-the-top, beautiful fall day here in the middle of November, Friday, November 15th, 2019. And so, for the first time in what will be 75 hours, I'm going to emerge from this little cocoon and uh, rejoin the world of human affairs. I think once again I have a date with a gas-sucking rototiller. Jesus, will I ever get this wildflower garden planted? But before I dive into that, uh, let's just dive into a little bit of doom and gloom here on the mainstream media, and this was the number one <coughs> story on the Yahoo News science pages. Appropriately enough, I don't believe Yahoo News is actually doing its job. And uh, to kick off the science pages, because you sure as hell will not find this, you know, just on the regular uh I word list of headlines that we're going to go from one I word to another <clears throat> here in the science pages from the good old Guardian, the Guardian's Environment Desk. Once again, we're turning to the Guardian for the <clears throat> No Shit Sherlock article <clears throat> Insect Apocalypse Poses Risk to all life on earth. Conservationists warn. There you go. There's our daily doom and gloom. New report claims 400,000 insect species face extinction amid heavy use of pesticides. The quote, unnoticed insect apocalypse. The unnoticed. Well, uh, I, I don't know where these people who have not noticed the insect apocalypse have been living. Obviously, they're not doomers. The unnoticed insect apocalypse should set alarm bells ringing, according to conservationists, who said that without a halt, there will be profound consequences for humans and all life on Earth. A new report suggests half of all insects may have been lost since 1970 as a result of the destruction of nature and heavy use of pesticides. The report said 40% of the 1 million known species of insects are now facing extinction. <clears throat> The analysis written by one of the UK's leading ecologists has a particular focus on the UK, on Zombie Island, whose insects are the most studied in the world. It said 23 bee and wasp species have become extinct in the last century, while the number of pesticide applications has approximately doubled in the last 25 years. UK butterflies that specialize in particular habitats have fallen 77% since the mid-70s, and generalist, generalist species have declined 46%, the report said. There are also knock-on effects on other animals, such as the spotted flycatcher, which only eats flying insects. Its populations have, populations have dropped by 93% since 1967, you know, because there's nothing for them to eat. But, conservation has said that insect populations can be rescued by introducing firm targets to cut pesticide use and making urban parks and gardens more wildlife friendly. Scientists 
said insects are essential for all ecosystems as pollinators, food for other creatures, and recyclers of nutrients. This is Professor Dave Golson from the University of Sussex <coughs> who wrote the new report for the Wildlife Trust. Quote, we can't be sure, but in terms of numbers, you know, t total numbers of individual insects is what he's talking about, we may have lost 50% or more of our insects since 1970. It could be much worse. We just don't know, which is scary. If we don't stop the decline of our insects, there will be profound consequences for all life on Earth and, and for human well-being. Close quote. Yes. <clears throat> Studies of insect populations over decades are scarce, he said, quote, but the overwhelming weight of evidence that exists suggests the rapid decline is a real phenomenon. It really worries me to hear people say we need more long-term studies to be sure. That would be great but we can't wait another 25 years before we do anything because it will be too late, close quote. I, I hate to tell the good professor it is already too late. The insects and the rest of the planet are fucked. But anyway, back to the Guardian. Gary Mantle, chief executive of Wiltshire Wildlife Trust, said, quote, this unnoticed apocalypse should set alarms ringing. We have put at risk some of the fundamental building blocks of life, but insects and other invertebrates can recover quickly if we stop killing them. <laughs> yes, insects and other invertebrates can recover quickly if we stop killing them, and restore the habitats they require to thrive. <clears throat> we all need to take action now in our gardens, parks, farms, and places of work, close quote, such as planting wildflower gardens, which is what I'm getting ready to do. <clears throat> in case you're unaware of this, guys, the planet is at the start of a sixth mass extinction. No, the planet is in the middle of a sixth mass extinction in its history with huge losses already reported in larger animals that are easier to study, but insects are by far the most varied and abundant animals outweighing humanity by 17 times. Well, I guess in the 1970s they outweighed humanity by 34 times, but there were half as many humans, so in the 1970s they outweighed humanity by 68 times. Now they outweigh humanity by 17 times. Anyway. Insect population collapses have been reported in Germany and Puerto Rico, <coughs> and the first global scientific review published in February said widespread declines threaten a, quote, catastrophic collapse of nature's ecosystems. Insects can be helped to recover by rewilding urban gardens and parks, Gulson said. Quote, there is a potential for a huge network of insect-friendly habitats right across the country. Already a lot of people are buying into the idea that they can make their own gardens more wildlife friendly, you know, by planting wildflower gardens, by letting go of control a bit. Yes. But, he said, the, quote, the bigger challenge is farming. 70% of 
of Britain is farmland. No matter how many gardens we make wildlife friendly, if 70% of the countryside remains largely hostile to life, then we are not going to turn around the insect decline. Close quote. Do you think so? The report called for the introduction of binding targets for pesticide reduction in farming and for support for farmers to reach them. This could be funded by a tax on chemicals. Yes, virtually all farms could significantly cut their pesticide use while still producing as much food, according to a 2017 study. That research also showed that chemical treatments could be cut without affecting farm profits on three quarters of farms. Matt Charlow, chief executive of the charity Bug Life, said, quote, the very latest research shows that quality habitats in the UK are so isolated that most invertebrate species are failing to move north to keep track with the climate envelope in which they can survive. Restoring networks of habitats for insects is now a number one priority." Close quote. Goulson said the UK's departure from the European Union means large-scale change is now possible. <laughs> Quote, whatever people think of Brexit, there is this potential opportunity to completely revise our farming system. <laughs> He said giving funds for boosting nature and other public goods rather than simply owning land <coughs> was a really exciting possibility. Morning, morning. Bullshit, morning. <coughs> anyway, uh, okay, look what happened. I, I barely tapped my computer, and I just killed my computer. Ah, uh, fuck. But anyway, now that my uh, invalid configuration information, please run the setup program. What in the fuck? I barely tapped the goddamn... You saw what just happened. This entire fucking computer has now crashed. <clears throat> Jesus fucking Christ, I get so motherfucking sick and tired of this goddamn bullshit. You, you saw what just happened. I went... And the whole fucking computer... Uh, crashing and burning, telling me I need to go set up some motherfucking setup thing. Jesus fucking Christ. Anyway, I gotta go uh, get a gas sucking rototiller so I can save the Garfield, Texas from the insect apocalypse. Bye, guys.